I'm not an idiot. I know you're both here to get information out of me. We're not trying to trick you into playing games. We're the, we're the police. That look says it all. This is Theodore Lucky, and he's a menace. But he's not just any menace, he's a smart menace, and that's the worst kind of menace. I judge Theodore as smart because I've watched his interrogation, and he comes off as a smart guy. I believe that you will agree with me when you watch his interrogation in a few minutes, but as for why I also label Theodore as a menace, well, get a load of this story. In 2009, Theodore, who, just for context, is openly homosexual, had a negative emotional experience with his boyfriend. All relationships have their ups and downs, and from time to time you might do something stupid in response to feeling down, something drastic even. But Theodore's response to a fleeting feeling of heartbreak was, well, is there a stronger word than drastic? In response to feeling rejected by his lover, Theodore called up an ex-boyfriend and scheduled a trip to Atlantic City, unanimously considered the most romantic getaway spot in the world. The two met up and began their drive to Atlantic City, but before long, Theodore suggested the two make a pit stop at a roadside motel. Once in the motel, Theodore suggested his ex-boyfriend be tied to the bed. The ex-boyfriend agreed, but as soon as he was tied to the bed, he noticed an abrupt change in Theodore. Theodore suddenly became depressed and stated that he wanted to leave this world. He walked out of the motel door, leaving his ex-boyfriend helplessly tied to the bed. Theodore then drove around, looking for an abandoned house. He planned on parking at the abandoned house to, in his own words, sit in the garage and die. However, he could not find an abandoned house, so he just chose a house at random. At the chosen house, Theodore rang the doorbell, to which an elderly woman answered. Saying nothing, Theodore pushed his way in past the woman. The woman, who believed she was being robbed, asked whether Theodore wanted money, silver, or credit cards. Theodore responded that he didn't want any of those things, he just wanted to end his life. Theodore then held the woman and her 87-year-old husband captive. He ripped the phone wires out of the wall so that the couple could not call for help. When the couple became hungry, Theodore fed them frozen dinners from the couple's fridge. He also helped himself to one. He was a gentleman about it though, leaving some cash on the counter so that he was technically paying for the meal. After dinner, Theodore led the couple upstairs. He removed all the door's doorknobs and barricaded the couple in using dressers and mattresses. Theodore then made his way to the garage to enact his ultimate plan of sitting and dying, except death did not come. Instead, police came. The elderly husband had managed to escape to a neighbor's house, where he called the police. This is usually the point in my videos when I say the police brought the man in for questioning and we're gonna watch the interrogation, but actually we are gonna skip that whole ordeal and move forward because Theodore Lucky's story continues. You see, while Theodore was convicted of the kidnapping of the elderly couple, that kidnapping itself isn't the craziest thing Theodore has ever done. The interrogation we are going to watch today pertains to an entirely different matter. It all begins with Theodore serving time for the aforementioned kidnapping. While in prison, Theodore shared a cell with Nathan Cashman, who became Theodore's lover. Theodore was released from prison earlier than Nathan, but he wanted to continue the relationship. He would send money and gifts Nathan at the jail. Nathan happily accepted the support, even accepting a large sum of money that was used to pay off a jailhouse debt. Upon learning that Nathan was to be released, Theodore bought name brand clothing and had them express shipped to Nathan so that he could wear them immediately upon release. But as soon as Nathan was released from prison, he ended the relationship. Keeping in mind that the kidnapping of the elderly couple all started because of a downturn in Theodore's previous relationship, you can probably guess that Theodore did not take this more recent breakup very well. In fact, this time, Theodore's reaction was downright demonic. Nathan was found dead in a hotel lobby, having suffered 120 slashes to the head, neck, and body. A hotel guest spoke up as a witness. One man was chasing another man through the hotel. 
One of the men had a machete and was slashing the other man. Hotel surveillance footage validated the witness's story, showing Nathan burst through his hotel room into the hallway with a machete-wielding man closely behind him. It further showed Nathan being chased across multiple floors of the hotel, even jumping out of the second floor window to escape, culminating in his running to the hotel lobby where he was trapped behind a desk and then stabbed, chopped, and sawed by the machete for nearly four full minutes. Surveillance audio captured Nathan's screams and begs for mercy, including one phrase that helped the police in their identification of the culprit. Please stop, I love you. When the police ultimately arrived at the hotel, they found not only a dead Nathan, but another dead man tied to a hotel bed. This man died via suffocation. A police investigation led to Theodore Lucky being identified as a possible suspect. He was located, detained, and brought to the police station for questioning. And uh, we'll take, we can take those off. Yeah, we can take those off. All right. Got some water for you. We'll work on getting some, some snack on. I shouldn't be too hard at all. I'm not sure. I took it off because there was mace on it. There was mace on it? Okay. All right. Uh, the shirt's over in the other room, so okay. we just different shirt. We're not going to bring back any, any shirts that are over there, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sit down and chat with you, and then we're going to work on getting you comfortable and, and kind of the next steps from here. So, we're just going to stay outside? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right, so we just check this for some privacy. Um, obviously, you, know, you can see all the signs in the room here. We're at the police station. We're, we're being audio and video recorded. That's 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 what happens at the police station. So um, everyone knows that. So um, my name is Alex Davis, and I work at the state police. Uh, this is my partner Chris Martino. He works with me, and obviously our job is to to sit down and talk to you and and you know try to learn what happened and, and try to get some insight into everything so that's why we need you to, to help us out here okay are they both dead well we want to talk to you all about everything so um before we jump into stuff um, um you know just like they say on tv i have to read a couple, yeah yeah you're familiar so i have to that's read it i have to read a couple things to you and then um we'll go from there okay but uh both chris and i are excited to sit down here and talk to you so um, the first one is you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand that one? Yes. Okay. It was that. I'm sorry. You say yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, the next one is anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Do you understand that one? Yes. Okay. The next one is you have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you are being questioned. Do you understand that one? Yes. Okay. And if you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before any questioning. Understand that one? Yes. Okay. And if you decide to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you will still have the right to stop answering at any time. Do you understand that one? Yes. Okay. So, uh, do you understand each of these rights that I just explained to you? Yes. Yes. And understanding these rights, are you willing to answer questions? Yes. Okay. Great. Well, I appreciate that. Like I said, Chris and I are here to talk to you and, and get you know, your side of everything here. So uh, we appreciate it. Um, first of all, it's Theodore Lucky, right, Theodore? Is, yeah. is it Lucky, L-U-C-K-Y? Is that your last name? E-Y. Okay, E-Y? Okay, make sure I got that right. If you need some more water, Theodore, well, just let me know. I'll step out and get you some, okay? Absolutely. And um, you did the first correct? Okay, great. Um, let's... What happened tonight? I, I, we'd love you to kind of start us from from start to finish, and then we can kind of go back into it. And I'm going to try to answer questions for you. Answer that. Are they both dead? Yeah. One person is deceased. We know that. Which one? We don't know names right now. What would really help us is: is there another person? Who's the Who's this other person? Which one is deceased? I like I said, we don't know the names. We're, so Chris and I are over here. We're not over there. Like? I don't have a picture of him. Things are happening kind of quickly. So if you think you can kind of help us save somebody, we'd really appreciate that. 
Is there another person we should be looking for? Yeah, where is he? Is he in a hotel room somewhere? Yeah. Do you know which floor or which hotel room? Wait a minute. You said one person is deceased? One person is deceased, yeah. Was that the one that was in the lobby? I don't know. Like I said, we're trying to, we want to sit and we want you to kind of explain things to us. That's why we're here. You know, you're the, you're the person, you're the important person right now that's going to be able to fill in these things for us. So that's you why just we're have here. to tell me which one. And I'll tell you. Um, I guess the lobby. But I don't know. I don't want to give you, you gotta, any, I don't want to give you any bad information. You got to tell me which one. Yeah. Well, it was, are they both men? Uh, is it one different than the other? Can you help me out? No, they're not. They're both men. They're both men? So one man's deceased. That's all I know. And I don't want to say which one it is because I don't know. And that's the God's honest truth. I wouldn't, I wouldn't blow smoke at you. I don't know. Where'd you find the body at? I don't know. We're not over there. You know, we're just, we're so if early you, in this right now. If you want me to answer anything, tell me where you found the body. <laughs> it's so That's difficult. It. We can't figure out where the body is. I'm sitting over here. I'm here with you trying to get all this information. This is the important stuff. So is there a body in the lobby? If you're saying someone's disease. In the lobby. What am I being charged with? I haven't said you're being charged with anything. I think what would help us is if we just kind of started at the beginning and, and tried to understand what happened here. And that's what I think you were the important person here to tell us that. Were you staying at the hotel? Yes. Okay. Uh, were you there by yourself? No. Okay. Who else were you there with? One of my friends. Okay. All right. Um, what's his name? Nathan Cashman. Nathan Cashman. Okay. Was it just the two of you guys there? Three. Okay. And who was the other person? David Amper. I'm sorry. David Amper? Dave. Anford. Anford. Okay. And you, which, uh, which, you guys were both all staying in the hotel. And uh, did you guys all check in today? Yes. Okay. And how do you guys know each other? I guess you can kind of explain each one separately if they're different. I get a shirt or something, I feel cold and hot. Yeah. Any time. Is that something? something? More water? You want some more water? Yeah. Okay. And maybe we'll try to find something neat down the hallway here. So he's working on the shorts, the shirt. Um, how do you guys know each other? You know each other for a long time? Or? Can I ask her some questions? Sure. Yeah. Why can't you tell me who's dead? Because I don't know who, I don't know the name. I don't, you've told me two names. I don't know which one, I don't know if it's Nathan or David. You can't describe the person where the I'm, body was. I'm not there. I haven't been there. I don't want to give you any bad information. I'm not going to play any games with you. I'm it's gonna... not going to be bad information if someone's telling you it. They're not going to lie to you. Okay. They're not going to lie to you. They're cops. They're not right. going to lie to you. Okay. So. All right. Um, can you describe to me what Nathan looks like? Young. He's young. How old is he? 28. 28 years old. Um, is he a uh, white male, black male? White. White, 28 years old. Uh, what color is his hair? Brown. Brown hair. Um, do you know his eye color by chance? Brown. Brown? Okay. Um, and again, I'm not over there and I don't know, but I know you want to know the answer to these questions just like I do too. Um, I think Nathan is the one who, who we found is deceased. 
Okay. Can you tell us how that happened? Thank you. So I'm going to try and find you a blanket. It'll kind of pause. You mentioned the three of you guys were, were in a hotel room. Um, and you've known each other for a little bit, or? Can I have a tissue? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's fine. Okay, so we can tell this is eating you up, and please don't be, take your time, whatever you need. We're, we're not here to, to judge you um, or anything like that. We're just here to see what we can do to, to help get the information. That's all we're trying to do here. Nathan was my boyfriend. Okay. All right. How long have you guys been dating on and off? Over three years. Okay. And um, are you guys from uh, the Bedford area, or what, what uh, made you come over here? Not from here. Okay. Where are you from? New Jersey. New Jersey? <laughs> Um, is, is, um, Nathan from up here? Is that why you're up here? Okay. And then, um, what about the other fellow? What's sort of his, his situation? Nathan definitely the one that's deceased. Like I said, I don't want to say definitely, but I want to answer your question. And from what you're describing, and you asked me, is Nathan the one deceased? I believe that he is. I believe that he is. And I can tell it's affecting you. And, and you're a human being and you cared for him and I can see that. So you guys were dating for a while. You're staying here at the hotel. Help us understand what happened. Would it be important to go back a couple of days, or do you think that everything kind of happened today? Did you, uh... No matter what happens here today, I know that I'm never going home. Okay. I know that. And why is that? Because the life is going, maybe too. Yeah. Thank you so much. Help yourself. I don't know. They're probably the same size. Just want to throw one around you. Um, and you married. I'm not married. You married? I'm married. <coughs> For how long? A couple of years though. Are you married? Nope. Uh, I know everything that happened. And I'm not an idiot. I know you're both here to get information out of me. We're not trying to trick you or play any games. We're the we're the police. That I I that's I get I that. I get that. And you're here to do a job. But I, I think it's important. We care about this situation. That's what I think I'm trying to tell you. We care. We want to know. We're not just here punching the clock, checking in, working nine to five. We're here because we care about the situation. He, he's definitely gone. 
You I you tell, tell me that. You get that information from me, and I'll tell you anything you want to know. I'm telling you the information that I have is that he's deceased. That's the truth that I, as I know it. I'm not trying to play games with you. I'm not trying to... I can see how upset you were. I can see how emotional I can tell that you guys had a caring relationship. We can see that. We're human beings. We can see that. And we know that if you cared this much, something must have happened to cause this. You have to be. Okay. Yeah. You lie to me? Yeah. Did this all happen tonight? Within the past week? It's been, go it's been going on a little bit. So, is the other uh, gentleman involved too? Like, uh, where does he fall into this? I don't know about you know, I'm not. I'm not sure about the. <coughs> not sure about the. <coughs> So did you guys, uh, you guys checked into the hotel today? Okay. Do you remember which room you were staying in? Or which um, floor it was? Or? Third floor, but I don't remember the room number. Okay. Yeah. Um, like you said, things have kind of been going on for about a week now. And then what happened tonight that, that kind of caused this? I was hurt. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Very hurt. I cry. I haven't eaten in two days. I haven't worked. No, we're a week. And I try. So this has been affecting you. I try to pull myself together. Mm -hmm. I try to listen to family, friends. Yeah. Who didn't want to see me hurt, but knew. I was hurting. You're trying to do all the right things. You're trying to make this relationship work, it sounds like. I was trying to not hurt. Yeah. I was trying to not cry. He got out of prison a few weeks ago. Okay. I think it was on a Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not sure. It was uh, the second, third, or fourth. And that weekend, That weekend, I, uh, I drove up here from New Jersey, me and my friend. Yeah. Show up to see him. You want to get my phone? Where is your phone? They have it. Oh, the the uh, police officers have it? Okay. Um, I'll show you the pictures. Oh, uh, what are the pictures of? Everyone, when I grew up here. Oh, okay. All right. So, who'd you come up from uh, New Jersey with? Me, 
My best friend Trevor. His husband. Yeah, my uh, my ex girlfriend that I've known since I was like twelve. And her roommate. And they were <coughs> they were all excited to meet Nathan. Yeah. This person that I had talked about for so long. And uh we got up here. We left on a Friday night. And we drove up here and we got here Saturday morning. So last Saturday, I think. Uh the weekend of the like the sixth to seventh in the eighth. Of August. Yeah. Okay. And uh we got up here that Saturday morning and I went to go uh everyone kind of fell asleep and I think I took a, I think I took a nap too because we were all tired I only napped for like two maybe three hours and and then uh I got up and I got dressed. And uh, I wanted to go pick up Nathan from the sober house he was living at. I was just going to ask you, so he was staying in the sober house when he got released? And where were you guys staying? Huh? Where were you guys staying? I live in New Jersey. But when you drove up, were you staying somewhere up here in New Hampshire? In a hotel. Okay. At the one here in Bedford, or was it a different hotel? A different one. Okay. Do you remember which town you were over in a different city? Or? It was a La Quinta. A La Quinta? Not sure which uh, town it was in, though. Like Manchester. Manchester, okay. Um, so you went to go uh, pick him up over at the sober house? It was weird, because... We're, we were in a relationship. We've been dating for over three years. And he told me he loved me. I told him I loved him. And he told me he wanted to marry me. And he wanted me to come up here. And, uh, when I picked him up from the sober house, I parked outside and I went and knocked on the door. He opened the door. I wanted to like hug him, but I didn't want to do it in front of the people that put in his roommate. Sure. Because I'm not sure whether they knew about him. Yeah. And then, uh, we left and we went back to the hotel. And he met all my friends. And then, uh, We were going out to dinner at the uh, Sheridan. Sheridan? Yeah. Sounds like things are going good. And I, uh, he didn't know it, but his birthday.
Yun. And he was in prison for it. And I wanted to surprise him at a little surprise birthday party. So I left in the hotel and uh, before I left I asked him so if he wanted any of his friends to come to the restaurant with him, check me. I say, yeah. Yeah, this friend. Momo. I'm going to pick them up. Went back to the hotel. And then I left. And I went to the store and I got them balloons. Happy birthday, balloons. Yeah. I had already bled them. Some clothes and stuff. And I got four gift bags. And uh, put the balloons in the car. And I went back to the hotel. My two friends helped me wrap the presents and put them into the gift bags. And I tied the balloons to the gift bags. And I... Sounds like you went all out. Sounds like you, you're, you know, doing everything that a relationship requires. He wasn't. He wasn't invested in it. He lied to me. Um, so that was back in, I think you said August, like uh, 7th, the weekend of the 7th. Um, and he was still staying at the sober house. Um, do you remember where that is? Is that also in Manchester? Okay. Um, um, and you guys were staying over at the La Quinta. Um, and then what, what changed uh, sort of the, the, the location for tonight? What, how did we end up over here in the, the country in? We stayed at the La Quinta a few weeks ago. Okay. Came back up here. Today. Today I came back up here. Oh, so it sounds like did you drive back down to New Jersey? Um, after that first uh, the, the birthday party and that, that week there? And then you're saying you drove back up today from New Jersey? Please have some sitting here so we can run for a while. Okay. Um, yes. Would you mind checking some of these? Look at you. Do you have anything in particular you like to eat? I think it's just some guys there. It's a vending machine stuff, so candy bar, chips. Um, that kind There's of no real food. Any allergies? No. Okay, let me see what I can do for you. Be right back. How's your water? Do you need any more? Thanks, Chris. Yeah, no, there's no, there's no uh, real food here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you live in uh, New Jersey with your mom, parents, family members? 
that room hits. Okay. Moving. We had a really good day that day. Is but that is that today or is that back on his birthday? On his birthday? His birthday. But then I came outside and I was talking to him and I noticed that there was a hickey on his neck. Yeah. And I asked him, where's the hickey on his neck? He said, uh, no. He said, um, he hasn't been with anyone. And no one's been sucking on like that. I believe him. <laughs> I totally believe him. I, I took a picture of it. I sent it to him, I showed him, I said, uh, but he said he did what? Yeah. I believe him, I did. And, uh, Was this the night of his birthday party that you guys kind of had this little, yeah, yeah, stuff? And. I, uh, I, uh, we went back, we had dinner, we went back to the hotel, and he had to be in by 9 o'clock. Yeah, that makes sense. That something with some substance coming, but hopefully this will at least get you mm -hmm. started. I feel weird. Yeah. Because I feel weird because I love him. But I hurt him. At night we, uh, this Sunday morning, I picked him up from the sober house again, and we all went to uh, the Red Arrow. Mm -hmm. And we had breakfast. Just the two of you, or did anyone else come? All of us. The, uh, the folks you came up uh, with from New Jersey? And then after that, uh, there was not much time left because my friends and I all had to be back to work. Yeah. What did you do for? Oh, I, uh, I drove forklift for forklift for Pepsi. Oh, okay. And I, I worked at a gelato shop, and I, I baked. All their goods and stuff. I worked two full time jobs. Wow. Is that down in New Jersey? Uh, what town is that in? I'm just curious. Is there is a Pepsi plant and a gelato place? Uh, Asbury Park. Oh, okay. 
so you have to take off and head back down to New Jersey. Um, you mentioned that you had kind of called him out on the hickey and that he lied to you. So did you did you guys end up kind of um, getting over that argument, or did it get did it get worse from there? That was Saturday. <clears throat> And then Monday, everything seemed fine. Tuesday, everything seemed fine. So around about Wednesday or Thursday, okay, then we started acting <coughs> differently. And I asked him, I said, well, did something bad happen? And I was just about to go in. Like, I get my hair cut every Friday. And I was just about to go in and get my hair cut, and I got a text from him. And he said, uh, he was breaking up. Is that this, this Friday, a couple days ago? Yesterday? Not yesterday. So a week ago? Last Friday. Last Friday. Okay. So he texted you over, over your cell phone? I just started crying. Sure. I said, why? That's when he told me he had slept with some girl. And there had been times where I asked him, many a times before, during our relationship, is he really wanted to be with me? And he said yes. And he said he loved me. And he said he wanted to get married. And he said he wanted me to move up here. And uh, and then just out of nowhere, just hits you in the gut, just takes the wind right out of you. I didn't get a haircut. I walked in and I gave my barber forty dollars, and I told him I can't get a haircut right now. And I walked outside. And I called him and he wouldn't answer. I said, "Please answer." And he answered. And uh. It was almost like he was a totally different person. And, uh, I was crying and asking him why. Yeah, the answers were just all very short. I, I didn't know what to do. I held it in. I held it in because My mother, I didn't know it at the time, but before we drove up for his birthday, she said, uh, she texted my best friend Trevor, out of the blue, and she said that, she said that Nathan didn't want to be with him. She doesn't talk to him. Right. 
She might have just been looking out for you. you know, uh, it's tough to hear. She knew nothing. She didn't talk to him. I didn't tell my mom about my relationship because my mom doesn't fully accept my sexuality, which sucks. So all she knew was that we were going on a road trip to see Nathan. And she said that he didn't want to be with me. And I told Nathan about the text and he said, how can she say that she doesn't know me? But it turned out to be true. Right. And that hurt. I couldn't tell anybody because I felt stupid. But I told all my friends about this guy that I dated for three years and um, all the nice things that he said to me, all the nice things we did with each other. And now he told me he didn't want to be with me. And I just, I couldn't function. Yeah. I, uh, I don't remember. No, I, that night I didn't have to work. And I, uh, I went out with my friends and I drank a whole lot. And I did drugs. Bless you. Yeah. So this would have been this weekend, right? You, down, you guys down in New Jersey still? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I never do drugs, but I wanted an escape. I just wanted to know myself. And uh, I walked out the club. I couldn't stand up and I threw up everywhere. I went home. And the next day, I went to work. And uh, my best friend Trevor asked me, what was going on? And I finally told him, because he came to my job. I told him. Cry. Cry. And my boss, boss walked out. And he overheard what was going on. And he told me to take a break. And he let me talk to Trevor. <clears throat> And, uh, <coughs> I talked to Trevor and Trevor told me that my other friends were worried about me because I wasn't answering the phone. So I told my other friends over the phone what was going on. And after about 30 minutes or so, Trevor left. And my boss walked over. And he gave me a hug and I just started crying. And, uh, <coughs> I left work early. I felt like it. Oh, I can't read it right now. Yeah. yeah. Talk to Nathan here and there. And you guys were talking during the week of, of, of the last few minutes. And I asked why. Thank you. 
It's a chicken finger sub. I'm not sure. Thank you. Cab accident on Y. So what about everything you said to me? So where does all that go to? And I cry and then he, I ask him, I say, can you please put yourself in my shoes? Please. And he started yelling at me. And I said, please, like, don't yell at me because I'm, I'm hurting. Like, please don't yell at me, please. The next days are like a blur, but I know on Monday, he told me that uh, <clears throat> he said he was moving in with a friend, and he had just gotten out of the prison. And uh, the state had paid for they paid for his rent for three months. Yep. And uh, he said he was gonna move out with a friend. And then. Uh, I think that night, that night he told me that it was, that it was his ex-girlfriend that he was moving in with. And did you know her from before, or was this the first you were hearing Yeah. And I told him because He's been in and out of prison for drug addiction. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I, uh, I told him I wanted what's best for him. And I said, before I knew it was his ex-girlfriend, I said, are you sure you want to move out? I said, why don't you stay at the sober house and get yourself together? You know? Because there's structure there. Yeah. I said, if you move out with a friend, there's no structure. Yeah. And I said, are you ready for that? Nevada. <coughs> I didn't want him to get high. And I told him, like, you know, why don't you give it like a month? Because he had been out for less than two weeks. Yeah. Give it like a month. And then decide. And in the back of my, my mind, I was scared. Scared of having a life. Go out and get high. And you'll me get that phone call that he overdose. Right. And I know it's weird to say because I know what I did today. And the next day. <clears throat> It was a Tuesday, and I went for a job interview at this hotel for uh, like twenty dollars an hour. And as I was leaving the hotel, I was talking to him, 
before I went into the interview, I told him, I asked him, can you, can you talk? Because now everything had changed and you know, I had to like ask for his permission if he could talk, like. Yeah. Had he moved in with her at that point? Not yet. Not yet. After I left the interview, that's when he told me to text him because he said I might be at parole. Yeah. And uh, I said, okay. So I got out of my interview. And I called him and he said, I just came from parole. I wanted to be honest with him. I said, about what? And he said, because I moved. And he told me one day he was thinking about it. And now, 9 o'clock Tuesday morning, he had done it. He had moved. Yeah. And what was that again? I don't know where he is. Oh, yeah. He, he never talked about it before. So you no. Know. No. With his ex girlfriend. And it hit me hard. Yeah. I'm like. Yeah. Less than two weeks ago, you were telling me that you want to be with me. You want to marry me. Now, in the midst of four, maybe five days, you broke up with me, and now you're moving in with your ex-girlfriend. Yeah. How did how did today unfold? I guess this morning. Did you go to work this morning? No. You took the day off? Or do you not work on Saturdays? I haven't been at work for like a week. Yeah. Because of this? Because I fell apart. Yeah. And I would find myself at work crying. I couldn't function because mm -hmm. I just didn't understand. I did not. I didn't understand. I didn't see it coming. Did, uh, did Nathan know you were coming up? We, did you guys have a plan to meet and talk and try to work through some stuff? So tell me about that. What, what was the the plan? He told me that he wanted to see me. Of course, I wanted to see him. I don't know. His Facebook. I read something a few days ago. And I remember the date. It was 16th. And he put that he was in a relationship.
Mm-hmm. And that hurt. Yeah. It was like he was literally taking my heart out of my chest. carving it, burning it, just over and over again as I'm pleading for him. Please, stop. Like, I'm hurting. Please. And right before I came up here, He, um, he told me that he wanted me to meet this girl. <coughs> and I called him. And I asked him, I said, did you have sex with this girl? He said yes. Why do I want to meet someone that you're having sex with? Why do I want to meet the person that you left me for? Why do I want to meet the person that took you away from me? And I told him I can't do that. I was willing to do anything to like see him. I didn't want to do that. Right. So you don't you don't want to meet her, but you still want to meet him. Yes. Okay. So, was that the plan today, just to to meet up and to talk, or was? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so did you drive up from New Jersey? This afternoon or this morning? Bless you. Thank you. Um, this morning? This morning. Okay. I feel down. I guess it's just good to know. Did he, um, did he know you you were coming up? Did you say, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up uh, today, and we'll we'll meet up and talk"? Okay. And then, um, about what times did you get up here in New Hampshire? The afternoon, or was it already dark? Or like by noon. Okay. What's Did you um, go over to his new place, or did you guys meet somewhere else? Or did you come straight here, I guess? Or, I'm sorry, the over the hotel. We met. I came to, like, the corner over he lived at. Where am I going after here? We're gonna have to. We'll figure that out. I'm not gonna leave you with any where where it's gonna happen or what's going on. I'm gonna be totally upfront and honest with you as soon as we get to that point. Um, right now, we're just trying to work through from start to finish. That's what we're dealing with. And I'm gonna be straightforward. Excuse me. Listen, I know. I know. I'm not going home. I'm not asking you that. Okay. I'm asking you what facility am I going to? I'm gonna. I'll be up front with you. I'll tell you exactly where it is and what's gonna happen from here. Where? I don't want to leave you stressing about anything. Okay. Where? I don't know the answer to that right now. Trust me, Chris and I are here to to listen to you and kind of work through this whole process with you. So. 
See, do you pick him up uh, down the street from his house? I don't know what to feel right now. Well, what we can tell is that you care deeply. That's what we can see. It's coming right out of you. And we can see the pain because just like you explained to me, someone you loved and cared for it so much, then it's happened. So um, you're, you're kind of like... I don't know. Bless you. Bless you. It's very weird because... We can tell you've got all these feelings built up. You've, you've... You ever watched that? That show, uh, Snap? I haven't seen that one. I went from loving him. Yes. To hating him. And. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I, uh... I could not believe what he did to me. And for all of my friends that I told the whole story. They hate him and they think he's a douchebag. Before he got out, I made sure that there was money on his account every week so he could max out his commissary. Yes. He ran up drug debts. And uh, <coughs> I paid those drug debts to Western Unions just so he wouldn't get in trouble. He wanted money on his phone, put money on his phone. I took care of him. I love him. Before he got out, he <coughs> He wanted an outfit. He said, I want red sneakers. Same sneakers he had on today. You bought you bought the red sneakers? And I bought him a red Nike shirt. And I bought him some black Levi's. And after I bought everything, I went to the post office and I overnighted it to make sure it was there. Right. And uh, you know, you're invested in him not only emotionally but but financially with everything everything that, everything that you have. Everything. So, what was the mood when you saw him today? What? How? How were you received? What? How, what happened? He really likes Dr. Pepper. <clears throat> so before he moved out of the silver house, I bought him a tiny little cooler, a Coca-Cola cooler. 
It looks like a refrigerator, but it holds six cans of soda, and you plug it up. And one of them, two eight packs of diet pe of Dr. Pepper, so I can give them to them when I came up here. And this was before they broke up with me. And I, um, uh, I bought them another outfit. <clears throat> And you're not getting that love and receipt in return, sounds like. But I used to. And that's the part that scares me. Because I wonder if it was all an act to get what he wanted out of me. And that hurts. Yeah. It's just human nature to that hurts. And I I am when I saw him today. We went back to the hotel room. Yeah. And I just wanted the person back that I used to know. Yeah. But I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. But it was over. And we lay in the bed together. <clears throat> He told me that it felt weird. And I said, um, because then his head, he'd say he felt like he was cheating on his girlfriend. And last night I was in a club with my friends and um, he wrote a post on Facebook and he says something along the lines that he's like with his soulmate and he's happy, you know, that's what he wants in life, yeah. his soulmate. In my head, you've been out for less than two weeks. You broke up with me one week ago, and now you're with your soulmate. I am. Um, I was in a club when I read it. And I started crying. I, I walked out the club. I got away from my friends because I didn't want them to see me crying. And I couldn't believe it. I'm like, this is crazy. This is a dream. It's a nightmare. So when you when you guys are laying there and he makes that comment about feeling bad about, you know, cheating with his the, the ex-girlfriend there, uh, I mean, obviously it doesn't make you feel good. Um, is that sort of what do you want me, do you want me to tell you that it made me feel angry well I know it made you feel angry it'd make anybody feel angry we're well, all human beings how would you feel <laughs> I'd be pissed how would you feel hurt no you wouldn't do what I did but other people have. Yeah. 
because of the hurt. It was like a blur. And I'm not sure what he said exactly to make me say. I'm not sure what it was. <coughs> it was something. So my skin making. I don't know what he said. But you snapped. And I can remember. I called my mom. I called my ex girlfriend. I called my best friend Trevor. I called everyone and I told them. I'm not coming home. You called them after after it happened? So did it start in the hotel room? No. And I know it's just <coughs> not a, a thing that anybody who ever wants to talk about. Um, nobody wants to talk about it, especially after all the details you gave us about your feelings and everything. But we'd like to know what the interaction was in the hotel room, um, how things went down. That's kind of part of our job, too. I know it's not anything you want to talk about, but it's important. I can't remember exactly what happened in the hotel room. Like, Were you two alone in the hotel rooms, do you? Yes. Okay. I remember. I remember being up against the door with him. And begging him. Not believing me. Not to walk out of the door. Yeah. You know what happened? Did it get physical in the hotel room, or did you uh, use a weapon, or how did things kind of transpire? I used the weapon outside of the hotel room. Okay. And what was that? I didn't know. Okay. And did you bring that up with you from New Jersey? I'm not 
never going home. And like I said, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. He hurt me. He hurt me bad. And <clears throat> I came up hoping for a miracle, hoping for a miracle. And but prepare for the worst. I thought that <coughs> something in him would change. Yeah. Because I just didn't get it. I just didn't understand why he left me. I didn't understand it. I still don't understand it. And just so we're on the same page, can you, is it um, a um, little knife, big knife, color? It's a big knife. It's a big knife, like, I don't know, inch, big as the sub, like a nine inch? It's like, it's big, like, yeah, okay. yeah it's big as you're spreading your hand out. Does it have a handle? Yep. Okay. All right. And um, did you, was it in your luggage or on your, did you keep it like, uh, yeah, in anywhere? It was in the room. It was in the room? Okay. Yeah. And like you said, you brought it with you because prepare for the worst. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. Okay. Um, you mentioned things happened in the hotel room and you didn't use the knife until you got outside of the hotel room. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? We were in the room and I don't know what he said. And then we started uh, arguing about him yelling at me. <coughs> and I said, please don't get upset. Please just talk to me. Yeah. yeah. Please just talk to me. Yep, yeah, like you said, you're, you're, you're begging him to, to stay and talk to you. Can I get something to wipe this base off? My skin is burning. Yeah, I'm gonna probably get someone to go get a paper towel. <coughs> um, you know, I think we can just try to. I don't want to rush you because I, we can tell that you know all the emotion you have in the, in the, the account is is important for us too. But um, I think if we can kind of <coughs> work through it here, and, um, we can try to make you more comfortable as soon as we can. So. Um, I just want to get out of here and go to wherever. We understand that. You guys got to send you. We understand that. Um, so, um, I guess you said, did stuff happen in the hallway or was it down into the lobby? Or could you help us understand where, where things kind of happened? And I've been in the lobby and in the hallway. And, okay. And when, the hotel. and when you say happened, um, are you are you um, stabbing or is it more of like a hitting or how would you describe it? Hitting. Hitting? Like coming from up down? Yep. And where were you hitting him? Everywhere. Okay. And this is Nathan, right? And I'm sorry, I, I got confused with it. Who's the other gentleman that was that you were asking about? Is he Dave? Dave? Okay. Where was Dave? In the room. So Dave was also in the room. In another room. Oh, okay. Did he come up with you from New Jersey? Okay. Yep. Um, and how does Dave get involved? He wasn't involved. <coughs> I'm sorry, you said he wasn't involved? Nope. So is uh, <coughs> Nathan's the only one that you are getting with the, the machete then? Yeah. Okay. And you've already mentioned the, the anger you were feeling when you were doing that, but what was sort of, I mean, 
obviously you, you said you snapped you you're angry about the whole situation um, what was sort of the the plan from there you mean that I want him dead yeah but why not just ask him well I don't want to put words in your mouth listen as I said I mean, I'm not going to show her anything I'm never going home no matter what I say in here, I'm never going home. And I know this. I told my family this. <clears throat> I'm not coming home. Okay. Uh, I wanted to hurt him. I wanted to hurt him. I wanted him to feel the pain that I felt. That's what I wanted. Now, sure, code anything. I went from loving him to hating him, to absolutely hating him because I felt like you can't possibly care about me. You can't possibly love me after everything you just put me through. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't deserve that. I didn't deserve that. That man, I wish I was able to stop crying, stop thinking about him, and move on. I wish. <coughs> And I couldn't. And I hurt. I hurt bad. And I came up here for a miracle. I came up here. And I didn't get that miracle. And he. He started being an asshole towards me. And all I've asked him in this whole situation, please put yourself in my shoes. Yeah. Please talk to someone you trust or you can confide in. And please, just think about my feelings and all of this. That's all I ask you. Because it hurts bad like I've I've felt pain before from breakups this was something different and I didn't I didn't want to go through the pain I didn't want to think about him laying next to her <clears throat> him laying next to her him having sex with her, her removing the clothes that I bought for him, her removing the underwear that I bought for him. I didn't want to think about any of those things, but those are the things that I thought about, and those are the things that hurt me. And I told him, because the day that, <coughs> the day that he was breaking up with me, he told me, this hurts. And I'm almost crying. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I am crying. I'm inconsolable right now. And I told him a few days later, I said, I'm still hurting. I'm still crying. How's your life? Hmm? How's your life? Right? Yeah. Are you crying? Are you hurting? No. He's not. <clears throat> it was funny because we went to Walmart right before all this happened. And just as we were getting out, there was a song on the radio. And it was saying something along the, long, along the lines of, you broke up with me in less than like two weeks. You're off with another girl. 
And I told him, I was like, you're singing your song. Um, yeah. So did, did, um, it end, did it end in the lobby? Did he fall down in the lobby area? Yeah. Okay. I'm then, sure there's video cameras everywhere. Oh, okay. Um, and then um, where did you go from there? What do you mean? Did you, you, did you leave the hotel? Did you walk out the front door? In the side door. Side door? Okay. And what did you did you just walk or I drove and I called my family. So you got in your car? No, it was Dave's car. <clears throat> Dave's car. Okay. The friend that you came up with from. Okay. And I told my family I've never come home. Yeah. And I told my mother because she kept asking about me and what's going on, what's going on. Yeah. I finally told her. Yeah. I said, you were right. Is that what you wanted to hear? You were right. You broke up with me to a girl. And I told her, I said, uh, I'm never coming home. And uh, so you walk out, you still have the uh, machete in your hand. Where did where's the machete now? I I think it's in the hotel. Okay. So do you think you dropped it I in the think, lobby area? I think I dropped it. I think I dropped it where he was. Okay. I think so. I honestly think so. But other than that, you said you walk out the side door and then you go over to to Dave's car yeah. and get in there. Yeah. Uh, you call your mother, uh, your friend. Um, I think you said one more person you called. And then, uh, and then where do you go from there? I don't know this area. I was just driving around aimlessly. Okay. And then my mother was free. And I think my stepdad was afraid that I was going to get shot because of everything that happened. Mm -hmm. And, uh, So I turned myself in. Okay. So you drove to this building here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and walk in the front door? I walked in the... I saw a fireman. Okay. Then I walked in and... Fireman seen me. And he asked me, was I okay? And I... Uh, I told him I needed the police. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I uh, came in here and uh, You walk in. Do you remember what you said to the police? I think the, uh, the fireman asked me, was I from the hotel? And I said, yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm from the hotel. And I, uh, I sat down and I pulled my shirt off. And then, uh, I called my mom and I told her that I was at the police station. Okay. And, uh, she asked me, was I in handcuffs? And I said, no, but I'm here. And she's like, how are you talking on your phone? I said, I'm in the police station. I'm just waiting for the police. And then, uh, an officer showed up. And I put my hands up. And I, 
and I lay down, and he came in and he cut me. Okay. Um, and safe to say, like you said, Dave wasn't involved in this. No. Did Dave did so? Dave knew that you were coming up here to talk to Nathan. Um, um, like you mentioned to us, you just kind of you were going to try to work it out, but you were preparing for the worst. Um, you know what would what is Dave? I you know I know you didn't talk to him, but as far as you know, Dave should still be in the hotel room, kind of not aware of what had happened. He doesn't know about what I did for Nathan. You said Dave doesn't know about what happened. He doesn't know about what I did to Nathan. Um, and Nathan's the only person that that you uh, you meant to harm today. There was nobody else involved. There was no other person that you you harmed. Is that correct? No. <coughs> no. So no, there's no one else here. Get you mid sneeze. Dave was harmed. Dave was harmed. Yeah. So tell us how Dave was harmed. Can I please get something to get this mace off of me? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Take three, three seconds. I'm gonna get a glass of water. Neither. We'll get it. Okay. Dave was harmed. Dave was harmed. Theodore, do you like going by Theodore? Or do you prefer being called something else? It doesn't even matter. I just want to talk to you how you want. Do you prefer Theodore? It's fine. Okay. Um, I'm really sorry for what you went through with your relationship. Can I ask you something? Of course. I know the officers are supposed to say certain things to get us to open up. I get that. Like I said, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. Do you really mean what you just said? I do. And I'll tell you why I do. Because I haven't been where you are. And I can't imagine being in that position. And I am really sorry that you were going through that. I really am. Thank you. I am. I can't imagine what that feels like. I've never been there myself. And... I am truly sorry that you were going through that. I can tell that you really, really loved him. And what you went through, I, I can't begin to imagine what that feels like. So, from the bottom of my heart, I, I really am sorry for what you went through. How long have you known Nathan? A little over three years. Can I, do you mind if I ask you something about him? What? What was your favorite memory together? It feels really weird because I loved him. I didn't want this to happen. I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe everything that happened. And I just... I couldn't believe it. Like, he was so nice to me. Like... He showed me that he loved me. And... <coughs> I showed him I found him. I just... I don't know how to feel right now. I just, I don't... I don't know how to feel right now. There's a part of me that feels that 
But there's a part of me that tells me Lee. There's a part of me that hurts. I don't know how to feel. I don't know. I love him with everything. I, there's nothing that I want to do for him. That's love. I just, I was happy when he took my happiness away. Put it like a blink of an eye and just took it away. And he changed. He changed. <coughs> and I just, I asked him. I would thank him on the phone and, and tell him, please. Please stop yelling, like, please, like, don't, don't get upset at me, please. I'm trying to talk to you. I am tell him I'm hurting, and I just, I don't understand. And I said, It's the way that <coughs> where did his love go for me? Where did it go? What did it was it fake? I don't know. I just I just don't know and I <coughs> I don't understand. I can I don't have to worry about him now and I'm, I'm sorry Theodore I stepped out there for a second but and before we left you had just mentioned that you had heard Dave and I just I want to kind of understand that too What's your name again? My name's Alex. Alex. Alex? I snapped. Yeah. Hi, I, Dave. I did. Okay. I did. Yeah. <coughs> so was Dave in, in the same hotel room or was he in a separate hotel room? A separate hotel room. Okay. Um, And I know you and Dave probably a different relationship than you and Nathan, but um, Dave was my ex. Dave was your ex. Yep. Okay. From like some years ago. Okay. Um, I mean, I just got to ask: Did you the same thing that like you described to Nathan? Is that the same thing that happened with Dave? What do you mean? Did you use the um, the knife that you had described to us? No. No. Okay. What happened with Dave? <clears throat> suffocated. You suffocated him? Yeah. Okay. What did you use to do that? Tape. Tape. Did um did you bring the tape or was the tape already in the hotel room? Or? It was in Dave's car. It was in Dave's car. <clears throat> okay. Um you know, and you know just to help me understand that was Dave kind of um, participating in this for a little bit and then did something change to, to Dave, make it? I haven't had a date for like 20 years. Dave. 
I don't know. I don't love Dave. I don't want to be with Dave. There was a point in time where I did, but that, that time is gone by. Yeah. And he expressed expressed to me that he wanted to be with me. And I, uh, I told him that uh, I didn't want to be with him. Mm-hmm. Um, he me. Yeah. Do you, uh, <clears throat> there were times when, when I did want to be with him. <laughs> One night I asked him to, uh, <coughs> Can I please get something to get this off my skin? Or if you they, don't, if they you said didn't, they didn't. There was no pepper spray. No you know, pepper sprayed you. Nathan had pepper spray. No, they said that nobody used any pepper spray. No, Nathan had pepper spray. Oh, I'm sorry. So <coughs> I missed that part of the story. Where did that happen in the hotel room? Yes. Uh, I got this. This is slightly damp. Um, if you want to try to wipe it on your face, there's no like. Like burns. Um, so when did that happen? In the hotel room? Yeah. Does he normally carry pepper spray? Or I guess? No, I bought it. Oh, you bought it for him? No, I bought it. I guess. I guess what I'm curious about is kind of the order of how things went did did you suffocate Dave before yes okay so you, <clears throat> you and Dave were in the other hotel room he kind of had said that he wanted to have a relationship with you and you weren't interested um and then how does that kind of spark um you know like you said you you using the tape to suffocate him Because <coughs> Dave, Dave was there, and wrong time, wrong place. <coughs> Dave, uh, I told him about Nathan. Yeah. Dave thought, <coughs> Dave thought that him and I were going to be together. Yeah. I told him about Nathan. And I told him. I told Dave that I was hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. And uh, I told Dave I didn't want to hurt him. And I said, uh, I said, I wish you know, I wish that I could leave you in the room like tied to the bed <clears throat> but because I told you everything you might get out and tell everyone and I didn't know what was going to happen with Nathan one way or another I didn't know I know that I was hoping that things would change because I just didn't understand. So, um, so you're in the hotel room, Dave, and he is. How is he? Uh, he's bound to the bed or tied to the bed. Yeah. Okay. And is he able to like manipulate? No, he's he can't do anything. No. Okay. 
And did he do that uh, sort of voluntarily, or was that something that you d decided to do? Uh, David, uh, well, more so now, he likes the whole SM and bonds type thing. And he was under the impression we were going to have sex. Okay. So he thought there was going to be some sort of bondage situation. So he's <clears throat> in, um, what did you use uh, to, was it duct tape as well? Like, it wasn't duct tape. It wasn't gray. Oh, okay. Uh, what was it? It was like plastic tape. I mean, like clear, clear tape. Okay. And cords from the hotel. Cords. Okay. Yeah. So he's... And go ahead and start going. After I tied him up, I sat at the end of the bed and I told him. I didn't want to be with him. So I wanted to be with Nathan. Yeah. And I told him. I don't know what's going to happen. But I said, well, if, if, uh, things go south, I knew what I was going to do. And, <coughs> and then I told Dirty King, I said, I don't, I didn't want to hurt him. I told <coughs> I wish we would just stay in the, in the room. Yeah. And I thought about leaving him there, and then I said, no, he's going to get out. You didn't want him to get out? No. You mentioned you didn't want him to, to say what you had said about yeah. Nathan. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I used the tape and I taped it around his face. Oh. Did you put anything in his mouth or was no. it just tape? Tape. And did you kind of like wrap it around his whole head? Yep. Yeah. A couple times or? Yeah. Okay. And so, um, did you, were you still in the room when he stopped moving or did you leave or how did that go around? I left. You left? I left. Was he able to make any noises or? Kind of free himself. I no, I didn't hear any noises. And, <coughs> and I went and picked up Nathan. Oh. Okay. In the back of my mind, it was that I knew the day wasn't breathing anymore. You knew Dave wasn't breathing. Mm -mm. And. It was just like a crazy dream. And what time would you say? I, I don't know the times. Yeah, but it was before you went to go pick up Nathan. Yep. Okay. Um, so did you, <clears throat> it sounds like you would have to get two hotel rooms then? Yep. Okay. Um, well, we were supposed to have friends stay up. Okay. Did, did anyone else come up with you or was it just you and Dave? Just me and Dave. Okay, and when you picked up Nathan, it was just you and Nathan? Yep. Okay. Was there anybody else involved or that came up with you or no. was involved? Just... No. <clears throat> okay. Okay. It's weird. Because I can hear Nathan telling me that he loved me. Yeah. He was telling me that he loved me. I said, no, you're just saying that because you want me to stop. And was that happening while you were? Yep, because if you truly did, yeah. Not even the whole breakup part, but just being more respectful, more understanding, not yelling at me on the phone mm -hmm. and screaming at me when I'm crying on the other end because you basically 
lie to me and fill my head with all this stuff that I believe, and I totally believe, and it was blindsided. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I know right from wrong, and it's not right. Nothing I did today is right. Absolutely not. But I take full responsibility for it. Full responsibility for it. And he was telling me to love me. Yeah. No. Nope. I don't feel like you love me. My heart doesn't feel like you love me. The tears have, have rolled down my face every day. Doesn't feel like you love me or care any thing about me and all you wanted to do was take from me and I told him before this happened I said this girl wasn't good for you she didn't put money on your phone she didn't um, send you money every week that was me and this is what I get and I said please please just put yourself in my shoes I begged I begged him. I begged him. Yes. And he just got <coughs> almost like more arrogant. So, <clears throat> um, did this occur? I, mean, I don't, I, I haven't been over to the hotel, so I have no idea what it looks like. But it, in the hallway area, is that when the first uh, knife wound would be, I guess? Or was that still, would you guys still be in the bedroom when yeah, you'd hit him with a knife? I think we were in the room because uh, I bought the knives and it was laying on the counter. Mm-hmm. Where did you get the mace? Walmart. Did you get today or yeah? Yeah. Is it for a local Walmart or down in New Jersey? I don't know a local Walmart. I don't know which one because I don't know that from Okay. Yeah. Guess I misunderstood you. Did you get the mace to give to Nathan or to use on Nathan? I got the mace. I don't know. It's not sure what they're playing on. Nathan wanted a gun. Because there was a girl that he had met a while ago and she used to be an escort yeah. so he would be in the hotel room like in the closet or something with a baseball bat and uh, he would stay in there and uh, if things got crazy he would come out and protect her yeah so he started doing that again on the side. I think it was a different girl. And uh, I'm from New Jersey and I live in like a bad part of New Jersey. And he wanted me to get on the gun. So I did because I love him. I brought it up and we were talking about the gun and uh, he said he only wanted it just in case for like show and he wouldn't use it on anybody <coughs> and that's what <coughs> that's what I suggested to Mace I was went to Walmart. Thank you. So did you, did you bring up the gun today or did you bring it up before? 
I brought it up today. Today. Okay. So you brought it up today. Is it, uh, is this up in the hotel room still? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm, sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. <coughs> they have it. Okay. What's going to happen with my money? What, uh, where's your money? In the hotel room. Okay. Um, how much money is it? A whole lot. Okay. Um, and it's all my hard earned money. Sure. It's a flying <coughs> out bill. There's 25. Everything's going to get documented. Everything's going to get And I've got receipts for all the money. I got sure. my ATM receipts and everything. Everything gets documented. That, that, that goes without song. That's all I want is my money. I guess it's a good, that's a good thing to say. Um, how many bags are up there? Did you bring one bag, two bags? Like a travel bag, or do you bring a travel bag, or what? Uh... No, because it was like last minute, and I had my backpack that I wear. Okay. And which one's your backpack? What color is it? A color? Or is it a... It's a black netted backpack, like, and it has my wallet in it with my ID and everything. Gotcha. Did you bring anything and luggage or anything? Uh, I change of clothes. Was the, are the clothes in your bag, or did you bring a bag to put the clothes in? No, the clothes are in his own bag. Okay. So his bag's up there, too? In his own room. In his room. Okay. Did, um, so in the other room, um, you got your bag, uh, the money, is the money in the bag? Okay. Uh, is the gun in the bag? I think it's in the bag. Okay. Yeah, it's a gun and it's brass knuckles. <clears throat> You've got a gun and you've got brass knuckles. Okay. Uh, anything else that we should know about that is going to be up there? Gun and brass knuckles. Okay. Did um, did you bring the tape or did Dave bring it? The, the, the tape was in Dave's trunk. In the trunk of Dave's car? Yes. Okay. Did you think of it and bring it up or did you grab it or how did that work? Oh. I brought it up, but it's, it's something yeah. we used before. Sure. Um, it's, yeah, I'm saying, I'm not saying what I did was right, and I know what I did was wrong. Yeah. And I didn't want to hurt Dave, but I felt like he was going to get up and tell someone. And what were you worried about him saying? Telling him, saying what? Uh, about me and Nathan. About what you were going to do to Nathan? Well, I felt like... I felt like... Suicidal and homicidal. Well, yeah, I felt. Sounds to me like you kind of, this was going and spiraling in that direction. You saw that and you knew this was going to, like, this wasn't going to end well. I hoped. Like you said, you were, you were praying that things would work out well. Honestly, I hoped that he would change. And, like, we were laying in a bed and he's like, this feels weird. I said, no. He said he feels like he's cheating on her. Uh, <clears throat> I don't, and again, I don't. In the hotel room, I don't know how it started. But I know that I remember grabbing the knife and he was going out the door and I'm not sure is it like when he was going out the door at first. I don't know if I hit him that first time, but I know he ran down the hall. 
He ran down the hall and he got to the end of the hall and he couldn't go anywhere else. And uh, I started hitting him with a wrench. And, and why couldn't you go anywhere? Was there an elevator bay there? Or there was no stairs? Or... I think there were stairs. I just... <coughs> I, I just don't think... He, uh... Is it a panic? Yeah. Then again, just so I understand, when you say hitting with a knife, it's it's coming down in like a slashing, kind of cutting motion. That's like... In, in, like as if you're holding a hammer and you're hitting a nail. Gotcha, gotcha. And and I know I asked you earlier. I said, well, what were you hitting? Like hands, arm, everywhere. You you were okay. everywhere. What were you trying to hit? Anything. Anything. Okay. Um, and I uh, he got past me. He started running down the hall. And I ran after him, and uh, I think he got to the end. At some point, he went to grab a fire extinguisher, and uh, I hit him with the knife, and he couldn't grab it. And then. Ran downstairs. Thank you. He ran downstairs to the second floor. And uh, we were on the second floor, and people were coming out of their rooms. And uh, I was just hitting them with the knife whenever I can, whenever I could. And then, uh, we got to the end of the hallway. And he tore the screen off on the window and jumped out the window. And he landed on the bushes. And I ran downstairs. And, uh, I could see him trying to get into someone's car, but it was locked. Then I started to chase him again. He went into the lobby. And he went into like a back room in the lobby. And I just kept hitting him with a knife. <clears throat> and I just kept hitting him whenever I could. And then we went to a back room. And he tried to grab something and hit me with it. He ran out of the room and he tried to like lock me in the room and he's holding the door and I'm pulling and he's pulling. And finally I get out the door and that's when he goes through the front desk behind the front desk. And He's behind the front desk. That's when I keep hitting him with the knife like several times. I was hitting everywhere. And that's when he started yelling out that he loved me. <clears throat> All I asked him for I tried to accept it, and I told him, I, I said, hey, listen, this was days before this happened. I said, I know that things are changing, okay? But please, please, 
you're hurting me like big time is <coughs> and whenever we talk on the phone he start yelling and I start crying I beg him like please please just think about just please put myself put yourself in my shoes please and then he would continue to yell at me and it hurt so when he was behind the desk and he couldn't go anywhere else and he started yelling that he loved me no because if you love me you never would have did this you love me you never would have lied to me the way you did you love me you never would have dragged this out the way you did you love me you never would have broke up a text message a text message okay if you love me you never oh i'm in a relationship literally it's friday the 13th he broke up with me he posted it on the 16th so three days later i'm in a relationship yeah that quick yeah that shows me just how much you love me all of that was burning in the back of my head all of it was burning in the back of my head i couldn't believe it i was angry i hated him every ounce of love that i have for him went out the window there's a song it's an old song it's a very old song but it's called it's a thin line between love and hate and it truly is because this is a person that I would have done and I did anything for and he did that to me and I just wish even if he had a, even if he didn't want to be with me right if he had a, to say you know what I'm not gonna rush into anything I'm not gonna move in I don't know days after I break up with you with my ex-girlfriend I mean Again, please put yourself in my shoes. I asked him, but I don't think he cared. I don't think he cared yeah. whatsoever. And at that moment, I didn't care. As soon as it clicked in my head, you don't give two shits about me. Nothing. Nothing. So you've got it kind of trapped behind the... Were there other people there? Were they, they moving out of the way? Yes. The guy moved out the way. Uh, I think when Nathan and I came in, he moved out the way. Yeah. And, uh, you're behind the kind of the desk area and uh, he's you know like you said trying to say he, he loves you but like you said you're just too angry you don't obviously you know what that means um, what were kind of the final final movements there that uh, did he fall down did he stop talking what what how did that go down he fell down I don't know I got it I just hit him over and over and over. I dropped the knife, I picked it back up. And I just kept hitting him. Like you said, you, you think you might have just dropped it right there? At the, you, know, you think you left it in the lobby area right there? There was no more need for it. Right. Right. And are I you... I think... Um, I'm pretty sure that... 
<laughs> what I was seeing, he was going to die. From what I was seeing. Based on what you were, you know, how you were hitting him with the, yep. the knife, you felt like he was going to die. Yep. And I think I mortally wounded him. And after that, and I dropped the knife, there was no more need for it. And I know the first time we said it, you, you were so honest and you said I, I was trying to hurt him. But at that moment, is it safe to say that you were trying to kill him too? Excuse me? Is it safe to say you were trying to, you, not just hurt him, but you were trying to kill him? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I, uh, it is weird because I feel a lot of different emotions right now. I feel a lot of different emotions. I feel somewhat of a relief. And the reason why I feel that relief is because I don't have to sit up at night anymore thinking or imagining him being with her because that hurts. I don't have to imagine that. And there was another girl he slept with. Now, I don't know who she was. Well, I don't have to. I don't have to think about that because that hurt me. But I don't have to think about that. I don't have to think about him. Yeah. And it's that pain is gone. But then there's a part of me that What was your name again? Chris. I'm sorry, Chris actually okay. he's about my favorite memory of Nathan. And I started crying. And that's confusing for me because I did love him and right now like my my emotions are all over the place about him I uh it sucks because I pretty much <coughs> gave up my life for him gave up my freedom for him and, and he's not here anymore do I wish I wish things would have been different I wish that he wouldn't have I wish he would have been more understanding yeah. because <clears throat> I feel like if he had a bit more understanding or just try to show me that he cared something yeah. about me yeah. I don't think I would be here but he just became so he and I, I I just remember myself being on the other end of the phone and banging and crying to him and, and yelling and me banging him please just be understanding please I'm a mental wreck right now if he was crying, I wouldn't want him to cry. I wouldn't want him to hurt. 
You guys want me? Mm -hmm. I just need to grab one more water. Yeah. My throat's killed me. I'll be right back. So, can I take you back to where you were at the hotel tonight? When you guys were planning on coming back, you and um, uh, Dave were planning on coming back to see, to go to that hotel. Who, um, who planned that trip to come back up here? Uh, this is Dave's first time up here. Okay. Um, so can you tell me how that plan to come to New Hampshire transpired? Uh, oh, I started talking to Dave again a few days ago, maybe like a week or so ago, I don't know. Okay. I started hanging out and uh, I told him that uh, I wanted to go to New Hampshire this weekend. Uh, he's I think he's on unemployment or something right now, I'm not sure. And uh, I told him what day I was going to go. And one of my nieces who came up here with me before, uh, we were going to wait for her to come back from Texas, but she couldn't make it. So uh, me and Dave ended up coming up, just a little while. So, so when did you plan on leaving New Jersey with Dave? We left this morning. We left. I spent the night at his house. Like seven o'clock. Okay. And before you left, did you book the hotel? Yes. Okay. And who booked the hotel? I did. And how many rooms did you book? Two. Do you remember which rooms they were? No, I don't remember the numbers. I know they were one, they were way far apart from each other. <coughs> one third floor. How many floors does the hotel have? Four. So you, you had two rooms at the hotel and you booked those before you left New Jersey? Yeah. Okay. So you and Dave drove from New Jersey to New Hampshire. You left at about seven o'clock this morning. Yes. And did you stop anywhere along the way? Uh, Walmart. Walmart. In Walmart and Walgreens, I think. Okay. Do you remember where? I'm not familiar with this area. It's okay. Then you said you got here about noon. Bless you. <coughs> now, prior to getting to New Hampshire. Bless you. Prior to getting to New Hampshire. Did you tell um, Nathan that you were coming? Yeah. When did you tell Nathan you were coming? He's known since last weekend. So you get... Was it last? No. Uh, no. Question. Maybe like... I don't know, maybe like Tuesday or Wednesday, what did I say? Tuesday or Wednesday, Nathan knew? Yeah. Okay. And when did you decide with Dave that you were going to take a trip to New Hampshire? Do you remember which day? We were out about the same time. Okay. So you guys get to the hotel? Yeah. Got about what time? Noon, you said? Yeah. And who checked into the hotel? He checked into one room, I checked into the room. And were you guys planning on staying in one room together or separate rooms? Separate. And the room that um, the room that you stayed in, which room is that in relation to how things played out tonight? 
the room. Nathan and I were in. So when you ch when you guys check in at twelve, what do you do next? Go up to the room. Go to the room, shower. Oh. That's it. Oh. What do you do after you shower? Dave was in one room and he came down to the room. The full room. And we pulled around and I tied him up to the bed. Mm -hmm. I told him that I had been seeing someone for over three years and that you broke out with me. In which room were you guys in? Um, they were both on the third floor. They were both one was at one and one was at the other. <laughs> so did Dave come to your room and you tied him up, or did you go to Dave's room and tie him up? He came. Like, I don't know which room. I don't know which room. Yeah, because Dave was in the, Dave's room was under the, the two bedroom rooms, and I had the one with the king bed on my car. Yeah, so he came to my room. Can you, <coughs> can you describe how you tied Dave up? Like diagonally on the bed? Okay, right, so what time is it? Sure, it is. A little after midnight. Am I gonna have to spend the night here? So once once we finish up here, we'll get some answers for you. Okay. I don't know those answers right now. Cause I I can't sleep in that thing over there. I just wanna lay down. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you guys, I've never been through this before. Like, does someone stay here? Do they go to the county jail, or what's the process? So the process, uh, I, I'd be lying if I said it's the same thing every time. So I don't know how this process will work right now. I will tell you that before we leave this room, I'll, I'll let you know what's going to happen, and Alex will get those answers too. And we'll be able to get those to you. Okay. Okay. Are you okay with continuing to talk with me? Yes. Okay. Um, so, can you describe how you tied Dave up? Dave up? You said diagonally on the bed. Can you tell me where you tied his hands and feet? His hands, the, the, the head of the bed and his feet at the other end. What part of the bed was he tied to? What do you mean? Like you said, you tied his hands to the top of the bed and his feet to the bottom. No, his hands were tied more to like the head of the bed. His feet were tied at the, the foot of the bed. Okay. And like the angle. And what were they tied to? Uh, like the the rails on the bed on the bottom of the bed. <clears throat> Oh. And what did you say you tied his hands and feet with? Uh, tape and like cords from the room. Where'd you get string? Where'd you get the cords from? <coughs> from the lamps. And then after you tied his hands and feet, what happened next? I told him what I was gonna do. Yeah. Can you can you tell me what you told him? I told him that uh, I didn't 
I didn't feel good about anything in that I didn't feel good about myself. And I told him I felt homicidal and suicidal. And I told him that I didn't want to hurt him, but I didn't want him to leave the room and tell anyone. Not the next. I put the tape around his mouth. Like around his face. And I left the room. Do you remember how many times you put the tape around his? No. Okay. And when you told him that you were suicidal and homicidal, what did you mean by that? <coughs> I didn't want to leave. <coughs> so like I wanted to take that gun and shoot myself but it's such a small gun I didn't even think it would work is that why you didn't take the gun huh is that why you didn't take the gun what do you mean, take it? You said you didn't want to use the gun. I felt like... I felt like I wanted to die. But I felt like I couldn't use the gun because I felt like it was too small. Like it wouldn't work. Okay. And when you said you felt homicidal, what do you mean by that? I had thoughts about hurting Nathan. Every since. Not when, not when he moved in. Not when he moved in with her. When he posted, when he posted on Facebook. <coughs> that's when, yeah, that's when I started thinking about it. And then, last night, When I was in a club and I read the other post that he had posted, I can't think of the words for it, but I was like, wow, that's really, really fucked up. You know? So at what point did you decide you were going to come to New Hampshire for that purpose, to hurt him? I decided I was coming to New Hampshire to get some answers to uh, talk to him face to face and see if somehow we could reconnect. See if somehow he was saying to himself, you know, I really do love this person. And I did nothing. So after you put the tape around Dave, did you put the tape around his face? Where did you go next? I'm exhausted. Changing choices, and I, I, I just have to deal with it. And I'm going to deal with it. Can you tell me where you went after you put the tape around his face, uh, around Dave's face?
After you put the tape around his face, what did you do next? Where'd you go from there? I thought you'd say you went, is that when you went and picked up Nathan? Yeah. How did you know where to, where to pick him up? Did he tell you where to go? Did he text you or call you or? Well, he called you? Yeah. Kind of gave you directions on how to get there? Yeah. Did you meet him at like a, was it a business or a parking lot or? You doing okay? Really tired. Really tired? Okay. I know you mentioned that last weekend that you guys, uh, you know, you were out partying and you had, you know, done some drugs. <coughs> Excuse me. Have you done anything like that today? Yeah. What happened today? Uh, I guess uh, edibles. Edibles? Okay. And uh, when you say edibles, does that mean um, like um, marijuana? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what time did you do that at? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. What about uh, <clears throat> what about alcohol? Have you taken any alcohol today? Yeah. What kind of alcohol have you had? Were you, were you guys drinking in the room? Yeah. What kind of stuff? Was it uh, like beer? Captain, Morgan. Captain Morgan's? Yeah. Okay. How much of that would you say you had? Two or three drinks. Two or three drinks? So Theodore, I just have a couple more, just a couple quick questions for you, and then we're gonna kind of get everything figured out here. Um, you mentioned um, planning for the worst was was kind of a word, a phrase you used. I just want to know more about that. Obviously, you said you kind of packed things up, and you know you mentioned you brought the machete. Um, but what do you mean for like planning for the worst? Like what is what is that plan? Do you want to take a few minutes? Kind of rest your eyes for a little bit? Yeah, please. Are you just tired? Are you tired right now? That's yeah. it? Have you been up a long time? Yeah. How long have you been up for? So did you did you sleep um, Friday night at all? No. You didn't sleep Friday night? No. No? Okay. <clears throat> So you've been up. You've been up for over a day. Yeah. Have you been eating okay? Yeah. I didn't eat all day yesterday or today. It's the first thing. I mean, is that normal for you, or is that no. not normal? No. Okay. Well, I've got a few more for you, but I'm telling you, if you want to just rest your eyes and take five, we can do that. Yeah. Is that is that what you want to do? Uh. So we can either uh, 
I know the other room's not as comfortable, but I think I don't know if there's a bench in there where you could, you could lie down and just kind of collect yourself for a little bit. Okay. Yeah, okay. Give me give me one sec. Let me grab somebody and we'll, we'll walk over there. I was the same with Good, thank you very much. You're welcome. Those chips are for you too if you'd like them. They're, they're like sour cream and onion or cool ranch. I like the cool ranch personally. What do I do with these? Those are your earrings? Yeah. You want to just hold on to them? Or you can leave them out on the table and we'll get them for you. They're like a thousand dollars. I feel like that. The earrings? Okay. Are they real diamonds? Yeah. How long have you had them? Yeah. yeah. It's a sharp weapon. And everything going for me, so. <coughs> Do you mind if I ask how much the diamonds cost? Well, the earrings itself here are a thousand. What kind of diamonds? I went to, uh... Bless I went you. to the, uh... The Jarrett Diamond Jewelry Store. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've always... I have some really nice earrings for Yeah. They're sharp. What kind of uh, setting are they in? Is that gold? I think so. I'm like confused about all that because you know, there's a bunch of different things you should know. But I just saw those and I like them. I got them. Yeah. Will they, will they usually make you stay in that year or take you somewhere else sometimes? It depends. Can I ask the other, the other officer now? What's that? Will the other officer know? He he might know. Um, I don't know for sure, though. When, uh, when he gets back, we can certainly ask him. You want to lay down for a little bit? What else do you guys need me to do? Uh, I don't know. How many more? Uh, what else Alex wants to know? I have a few questions, but we can certainly take a break. Is that what you want to do? You want to take a break? Yeah. Okay. you find this room to be more comfortable? Yeah. Would you rather take a break in here and leave you alone for a little bit? Is he okay to yeah. just take a little break right there? We'll go, you want to go lay down like where there's an area where you can kind of like rest your head on a pillow for a little bit? Can I do that? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll walk over here and uh, walk back where we were and uh, like you said, take, take your time. And... Theodore Lucky was sentenced to life in prison for the murders of Nathan Cashman and David Hanford. At the sentencing... 
Theodore made the following statements with regard to Nathan. I don't regret doing what I did. Whatsoever. I never will. I can look in the mirror every day and be okay with it. I can walk around and stand tall. Yes, I did what I did. But Nathan Elliott Cashman, if he didn't lie, if he didn't cheat, if he didn't cheat, guess what? He would still be alive today. Theodore blew a kiss to the victim's family as he was dragged off to prison.